Guys, so we're out here. I'm picking up my new F450. This is, well, we ordered it in July and it's end of December now, but I think the chassis showed up in what? In, uh, about four weeks ago. Yeah, about a month ago or so. And then we had to get the bed and everything put on. So this is Sealy Ford here in Kalamazoo. Jared Garrison is who I've worked with. Second second truck I think yep. I bought for me now. Cool thing is he's actually, a, he's a tractor owner. So I, I think he might have the wrong shade. What, what tractor do you own again? A Kubota. A Kubota. What model is it? Uh, L3010. All right. All right. I think I remember you found a pretty good deal online. Yeah. Okay, cool. But he did buy a set of pallet forks from me. So we're on good terms. We're on speaking <laughs> terms, you know. <laughs> but anyway, are you guys seeing a lot of delays on trucks right now? Yeah, they've, uh, depending on the truck, they've been anywhere from, uh, you know, three, three months to some some as long as six months okay. um it it really depends that the xlt and the more the work trucks are getting built faster the high-end trucks like your your king ranch yeah. that that right now would be probably six or eight months out so the more options on there maybe more supplier delays yep. that are affecting everything exactly okay. if i remember right i had to sign something saying it was this was an actual customer order not just a dealer lot inventory order yes yep. are they yeah. prioritizing They're, that yeah they are prioritizing the sold the sold re, truly sold retail orders okay and they are prioritizing those and that's really all they're prioritizing right now and all they're building right now okay. so it kind of as you can see we don't have anything on our lot really for sale yeah uh just because they're they're only building those sold orders so. okay all right well so what's new for 2022 is there anything different on the 450 from the previous model years from 2021 yeah not a whole lot's changed from 21 to 22 pretty much everything carried over uh they made a couple color changes uh luckily they still kept this same color it's a beautiful beautiful color they've had for a couple years now um they finally actually changed the antenna they updated that to a, a shorter, more normal antenna. Uh, that's probably been the biggest change actually for 2022. So okay, well hey, that's easy. So this is this is the antimatter blue, the same as what I yep. have on the 350. Yep, exactly the same paint code. Okay, that's nice because when I ordered the 350 last year, there weren't even color samples online that you could look at, right? Right. You just had to go in blind and hope it was a. A decent shade. Yeah, exactly. That's a fun way to sell cars, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what are the features on an F450 or the Super Duties in general? Maybe something that stands out that the competition doesn't have. Is there anything in particular? Well, some of the biggest things, and the reason why I usually push people to a 450 if they're looking at a 350 in that dual rear wheel truck is the front axle. So the front axle is wider and uh, has a coil spring front end. So you got a lot of turning lock in that oh. front end. This thing will actually probably turn about as sharp or sharper than your 350 oh, no single rear wheel pickup does. Wow. So you're gonna notice that it can really, really turn sharp. And these 19 and a half inch, you know, commercial tires yeah. don't have any, you know, they're real stiff sidewalls, don't have much sidewall flex. Okay. So it really keeps you glued to the road if you're really putting a heavy trailer on the back okay. or loading it heavy. Well, so. so this is an XLT. You know, I like to kind of option my vehicles out when yep. I can, but I wanted to have a standard cab. I think that's why we ended up in the XLT and not like a Lariat. You could only get, was a super cab the smallest you could get? Right. In yep. a Lariat. So yep. Lariat, Lariat, I've, I've got some grief for that before, however I pronounce that. But uh, so I've got this optioned out pretty good. I think we got what, telescoping mirrors on here. Yep, the, power, the mirrors, power telescope, uh, power telescope and power fold. Okay. And then uh, it's got the touch screen uh, with navigation and satellite okay. radio. Um, you got the power driver's seat All right. uh, with power lumbar. And then you've got the uh, keyless entry keypad on the door. Okay. Uh, remote start, which is now two-way remote start on two the key way. there. 
What's two-way? Um, two-way means that it'll it'll notify you. It'll have a green light come oh, on the key when okay. it starts to yep. let you know that. So yep. whereas in the past, you know, uh, you you take a guess if the truck was started yeah, right. or not. You know, you kind of like had to go see that. Oh, nice. Do I see the lights on or not? That's so nice. That's this good. way it lets you know that it started. Does this have? And I don't know if you can have it on or not. Does it have the bliss, the the blind spot protection or no? Uh, th these do not have that. No. Okay. Okay. Is that because like there's no regular truck bed on there or what? Yeah, it's tough because they they usually put those blind spot sensors in the rear tail lights. Okay. And since these are aftermarket tail lights on a aftermarket body, they yeah. they don't ha they can't have those sensors. No real in way there. to do that. Yeah. Did we get a backup camera or no? Yep, backup we camera. We did order that, so that's built into the bed there. So okay. you got that that's on built the screen into the, there. The flat bed that's on there. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, that's good. So it's still optioned out pretty good, even though it is an XLT. And these are, are these the LEDs? No, those are halogen these headlamps. Are, these are yeah, halogens and that's on here. something that yeah you had to get Lariat or higher in order to get. Um, that get the LED headlamps, okay, which okay, that's so another I'm, thing that would hold up production. I've got a Lariat on order for a guy with LED headlamps. It's been on order for eight months, still no ETA no yet. So. Wow, wow. Well, I may have a project then to try to upgrade these to some LEDs, so I can handle that. And the, the uh, body lights, though, all the body lights on the flatbed are all LEDs. Okay, so. well, good. All right, cool. So I see a big debate online. I'm a diesel guy. That's what all my trucks are running. I like to keep things on the same platform, but in these Super Duties, the 350, 450, 550s, are you selling more gas or a lot of guys upgrading to the diesel? Uh, still selling a lot of diesel. Uh, the gas, uh, I'd say the majority of the gas engine trucks are uh, regular cab dump trucks. Local landscapers run them. They're only putting six, 10,000 miles a year on them. Uh, okay. It makes sense for them because um, yeah. they're just putting such low mileage on them. Well, it's a big upcharge to go to the diesel. Right, yeah, it's uh, it's a, almost a $10,000 upcharge. So, you know, for, for low low usage in the miles, you know, you're, that fuel economy savings, you're not gonna see it. And okay. then um, um, just the, uh, you know, the towing ca capability, obviously on the diesel a lot higher. Yeah. And, but like I said, when you have a dump truck, you're usually just pulling like a bobcat around. Right. You're not, you don't need that huge tow rating, yeah. so. Yeah, not a big gooseneck or. Right, yeah, you can't tow a something. gooseneck with a, with a dump truck, yep. so yeah. Yep. Are you seeing a lot more maintenance costs, repair costs on the diesel versus the gasoline or vice versa, anything like that or no? Yeah, the, the diesel is always going to be more expensive with the, with having to add the def fluid and yeah. the, uh, you know, the price of an oil change. Um, you obviously, you see it, the cost savings come back uh, on resale value. Yep. I mean, you can figure, you know, in a couple of years, even 10 years, probably you're going to see four or $5,000 more in resale okay. value versus the gas engine. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it definitely takes you got to be doing probably 15, 20,000 miles a year or more to uh, to see any kind of return on the fuel economy savings okay, from okay, it. So, yep. so yeah. mileage is going to be a big factor and towing capacity, what you're using right. it for. Yep. All right. Okay. Hey, well, I appreciate it, man. All Second right. vehicle. Nice doing business with you. Yeah, Make it easy. Appreciate it. Check out Sealy, Sealy Ford. Okay, Jared Garrison. We'll put a link in down below in the description. So if you get inundated with business, <laughs> that's a good thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we're good to go. Appreciate it. Yep. Alrighty guys, well this is the latest edition. I do now have three different Super Duties in the lineup actively being used. A 2017 Ford F250, uh, then we have the 2021 F350, and now the 2022 F450. So I did have a 2018 Ford F350 as well, and we've done some reviews on all three other trucks. Not that trucks are an integral part of this channel, but they are an integral part of my business. And, and if I can help others kind of sharing information on maybe what problems I have or what to avoid or what options to get and what's available. If I can help you out, then why not share? I've had the big three brands of trucks, many of each model and make, but they all have some problems, right? And so for me, it comes down to support from the local dealer because I'm not wrenching on these machines, uh, these trucks myself. I take it in there to get it done. And the Sealy Ford dealer really does have a fantastic service department over there. They take really good care of me. Uh, we have an expedition as well that my wife drives. We take it in there also. And it just means a lot. We've switched everything over. We've got a couple dealers in our area that are, that are challenged in the customer service department and so i actually we, we sold one of our vehicles and switched over to ford because we're very pleased with them so my business revolves around using selling tractors and tractor attachments and other heavy equipment and so we have gooseneck trailers dump trailers that kind of thing that are hooked up to these trucks on a pretty regular basis and most of the time is somewhere around town not too much over the road anymore we used to do more of that but we've kind of backed off from that but you know we're hauling anything from just a, a trailer load of attachments to just your compact tractors to a skid steer telehandlers um, we've got a mini excavator now too so there's a lot of different pieces of equipment that we want to haul up load around town to different properties and locations and it's just a bit of the natural progression of life and of business you know I started out with the f-150s you know never anything less than a half ton because that's not a real truck but 
half tons, and then we graduated to the three quarter tons, which would be the 2017 F-250, which, man, I was gonna trade that in, but the way that used vehicle prices are right now, if I ever had to get another vehicle for some reason, I feel like it's just better off to keep that one right now. So we didn't trade it in, we kept that one, but we just kept going bigger, you know? So I had an F-350, that 2018, traded it in on this 2021 F-350, and now we have uh, this bad boy here too, which is, I think, gonna set us up for <laughs> a good while. I, I don't know, I can't see us needing an F-550 or a 650, but who knows? Only time will tell. So the 450 is gonna be an XLT compared to the King Ranch that you have over on the 350. Uh, this is the second year for this color, this shade. It's antimatter blue, which when I bought the 2021, there were no color samples, nothing you could see online to really have an idea of how it looked. Some guys uh, mistake it for black in color, but when the light hits it just right, you can definitely tell it's a shade of blue and it's got some uh, metallic flake in there of some kind, some reflection, some sparkle too, which is kind of nice, dresses it up a bit. And there's a few things I had to make a trade off with getting an XLT over something like a Lariat or a higher end package. And I really just didn't want the extended cab. I really wanted to keep this more of a work truck and, and I didn't want it to be longer than it had to be. I just wanted to keep it more simple, I guess. But doing so meant that I had to get an XLT or an XL. And so I got the XLT. One of the biggest drawbacks that I'm, well, two of them, I guess. You can't get the LED lights, which I find to be annoying. And then the blind spot, uh, the bliss system, which the blind spot awareness, you know, the little orange lights that are in your mirrors, your side view mirrors. So when somebody's in your, your blind spot, it notifies you. I really like that system. So that was a tough trade off for me to get or not get, I should say, with the XLT. Now, I did want to give you guys a rundown of some of the options that I added on above and beyond the standard that I think are definitely worth considering. And the first one, which is huge, I wish you could do this on the 350, is two fuel tanks, all right? So one of the fuel tanks is gonna be 40 gallons and the other one is 23 gallons. When I hopped in here and turned it on, I had over 700 miles until empty, which is a pretty incredible feeling. If, if you guys drive long distances, you know what I mean. I am up to, I'm, I've been getting high teens, I think for the most part, now that I've had this truck for about a year. When we started out, the mileage was pretty bad, but after that break-in period occurred, the mileage started to increase and improve. And I know that when I've been on the highway, I've definitely crossed the 20 MPG mark, which is really good for a truck this size. But if memory serves, it's still only around a 34 gallon tank. And so to have almost double the capacity in a truck like this is pretty awesome. And so there's a handful of other upgrades, other options that I put on this truck that really, I mean, most of these start with a, a one as in 100 and something. So there's a few that are more than that, but if you're spending this kind of money, which let's see, for the chassis, not with the bed on there, but just the chassis, it came out to about $65,000. So these, these trucks are getting out of control, but when you're spending that kind of money to pay a couple hundred bucks for this option and that option, why wouldn't you just to have the convenience uh, and have it tricked out the way you want it? So running down this list, we added the snowplow prep package for 250 bucks, the engine block heater for 100, the dual diesel fuel tanks, that was an extra 625. Uh, we have the power scope, uh, folding mirrors. So those, those mirrors will slide in and out and they'll fold on their own, which is really convenient. I use that all the time uh, when we're parking. It just, it, it's, it's worth getting in my opinion. We added on the running boards for 320 bucks. Some safety things, the pre-collision assist for 115, audible lane departure warning for 115, rear view camera, you can get that. They have that installed on here within that aftermarket bed that we have put on there. Oh, uh, that was a little bit over 400 bucks. Fog lamps for 130. Oh, and a really good one for you guys up north too. It's called the Rapid Heat Supplemental Cab Heater. What that does, you know, diesel engines take a long time to heat up. And so if it's the dead of winter and you're frigid, you're cranking the heat, and it's just coming out with cold air, get that option, the Rapid Heat Supplemental Cab Heater. That's what it's called. 250 bucks, but it's gonna provide heat inside the cab a lot quicker before that diesel engine warms up. We did add on the remote start for 250 bucks. I feel like that's a no brainer. And then actually we got a, a, a credit. We deleted the carpet, just have the, the rubber floor in there. We got to get some floor mats and that was um, a savings of 50 bucks. Now I will say just like a tractor, when you get a new truck, that's not when you stop spending money. So there's a few things I wanna do. I wanna get some floor mats in here so we can easily take something out, clean it off. I'm thinking I might wanna get some seat covers as well so when any of us guys get in here, we're not just demolishing these seats, we can keep them clean, wash those seat covers. I know I'm gonna to wanna to update those halogen headlights to get LEDs, so that's gonna be high on the priority list. And we definitely need some more storage for straps and whatnot, and I wanna get a diesel transfer tank as well so that way when we're out in the field, different projects, we can easily refuel equipment. All right, so we wound up with a bed that was not my first choice. You know, we ordered a diamond plate bed that I really wanted. Uh, at the same time, we ordered the truck back in the summer, and after the chassis came in, they dropped it off at the 
the bed place to get it installed and I got a phone call from them that said it could be another 12 or 18 months before that bed showed up. So Jared ended up searching around and came across this bed that one of the other companies around town or maybe up by Grand Rapids just happened to have in stock. And it's not the bed I wanted, but it's the bed they had and I didn't have to wait an eternity to get it. So uh, we got it, we're living with it. But this is the first flatbed truck that I've had. You know, it's got the, uh, the gooseneck built in right there too, which is great. I don't know if there's anything to look out for, any concerns to have. I know that you can put some boxes, it looks like, underneath the sides. Maybe we can get a fuel transfer tank on one side and, and tool uh, strap storage on the other side. I don't know. If there's something else I need to look for or maybe there's some cool modifications you can make to them, I'm all about that kind of stuff too. Alrighty guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview, some insight into the 2022 F450. You know, if you guys have a lot of questions or maybe as I get uh, some more miles on here, maybe we have some problems, maybe we have some upgrades, we can put together another video with all that information too and keep you updated. So, you know what, if you enjoy videos on trucks, but mainly tractors and tractor attachments, projects, property development, all that kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And if you do have a tractor, guess what? We sell tractor attachments. We ship them all over the country right to you. So we can sell you pallet forks or a box blade or a rototiller, or a snow pusher, you name it. Go to goodworkstractors.com. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.